Okay, guys, buckle up, because we're going to be answering the question, can men get pregnant? Oh, man, guys, what is going on in the world? I mean, like, honestly, I'd never thought I'd be alive in a time where if you don't think men can get pregnant, you're considered transphobic. That's what we're going to see in this video. It just feels like, is it me or does it feel like a weird time to be alive where now everything is transphobic, everything is homophobic, and we we have these crazy questions being asked at Senate, Congress, of whether a man can get pregnant or not. And then we're going to watch some other abortion nonsense, some more nonsense arguing whether abortion should be legal or not. Well, if you didn't know, now because abortion is no longer a constitutional right, we're able to talk about this at Congress, Senate, these things. You couldn't talk about it before because it was in the Constitution. So there's no debating it. It used to be a constitutional right. Now, because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which, by the way, is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. But because of that, now we're able to have these conversations on a political level because it's no longer, I never thought I'd hear the day or be able to say this, but it's no longer a constitutional right to murder a baby in your womb. Let's react to some of this. Let's watch this. I'm just going to warn you, you might need a Tylenol after watching this video. Okay, here we go. Senator Josh Hawley is going to be interviewing Berkeley law professor Kiara Bridges about whether men can get pregnant and a bunch of other issues we're going to go into later. Oh, this is a head scratcher, guys. This is a head scratcher here. Let's just see what she has to say about it. This is a law professor. She teaches law. Oh, man. Kind of scary that we have people teaching law that are responding the way she's about to respond. But let's go ahead and watch this together. What do you say a woman is? Oh, wrong video. Hold on. Mr. Bridges. Can identify? I played the wrong one. Okay, we're going to watch that one after. Oh, it gets worse. Okay, here we go. Let's watch this. You said several times, you've used a phrase. I want to make sure I understand what you mean by it. You've referred to people with a capacity for pregnancy. It, would that be women? Many women, cis women, have the capacity for pregnancy. Many cis women do not have the capacity for pregnancy. Um, there are also trans men who are capable of pregnancy, as well as non-binary people who are capable of pregnancy. So this isn't really a women's rights issue. It's a, it's, we can it's recognize a that this impacts women while also recognizing that it impacts other groups. Those so uh, they're at an, I, I know, guys, in my videos, I don't mean to laugh. It's just so crazy to me. It's hard not to just grin. I know you're like, why do you laugh in your videos? It's not funny. It isn't funny. But it's hard not to grin when we're actually having this discussion here. And the senator's asking her, law professor at UC Berkeley, the whole abortion issue, is it just for female? And she's going to go ahead and say, and her, the argument here, because I'm only giving you a one minute clip, is it's not just for females, but men can also get pregnant. So abortion's also a male issue as well. And, you know, for since the dawn of time, men have never been able to get pregnant. But all of a sudden, 2022, is there a new invention I missed where now men can get pregnant? But... Again, those things are not mutually exclusive, Senator Hawley. Oh, so your view is, is that the core of this, this right then is about what? So um, I want to recognize that your line of questioning um, is transphobic <laughs> um, and it opens up trans people to violence. By Wait, okay. What he just said, she said is transphobic opens trans people to violence. What is she talking not about? Recognizing that. Wow. You're saying that I'm opening up people to violence by asking whether or not women are the folks who can have pregnancies. So I'm one, I want to note that one out of five transgender uh, persons have attempted suicide. So I think it's important because of my line of questioning, because so we can't talk about it because denying that trans people exist and pretending not to know that they exist. I'm is denying dangerous. that trans people exist by asking are you? you if you're talking are you? about women are you? having pregnancies. Do you believe that uh, men can get pregnant? That's the question of the hour. Do you believe men can get pregnant? Because if you don't believe that, then you're opening up trans people to violence. Where where do you make that connection? How do you connect those two dots? If you don't believe men can get pregnant, you're opening up. And this is the same. These arguments, guys, are the same craziness of abortion. The same arguments we're about to see her give on abortion is just as crazy as this. But man, how could you win with these people? No matter what you say, it's wrong. It's, it's wrong no matter what you say. No, I don't think. Women can get <laughs> so you're denying that trans people like this. And that leads to violence. Is this how you run your classroom? Are students allowed to question you, Absolutely. or are they also treated like this, where no, you, no, no. they're, they're told that to they're at, opening up people to oh, violence? We have a good time questioning. in my class. You should join. Oh, I bet. You might learn. So she. Uh, what do we start, guys? So because this is the pressure being put on the po political leaders, and it will be getting put on the church. Trust me. The fact that I can make this video is is a miracle because there will come a time where i can't even talk about this without being considered homophobic transphobic in fact let me say this i got banned on facebook 
yesterday for 24 hours. I couldn't stream tonight because I said in my title of my description of my video was why Christians are lazy. And my video was about why are Christians so lazy and Facebook and Instagram community guidelines strike me and ban me for saying Christians are lazy because it was considered hate speech against Christians. So what a world to live in. And this guy's now Senator Hawley is considered considered transphobic because he says men can't get pregnant. That's a biological fact. Ladies and gentlemen, Google it. It's a biological fact. Let's hear some other stuff. This this lady, I don't know what to say about it. I don't really have much of things nice to say, but here is this hearing you're going to hear is how is the world going to go on after abortion is no longer constitutional right? They're trying to figure out how are we going to survive that we can't kill babies now? And I say that sarcastically, and that's what this hearing is about. What does America look like post Roe v. Wade being overturned. So let's hear some of these arguments here when it comes to abortion. Professor Bridges, you, in your testimony, talked about the prevalence of abortion. Here she is again. Um, the percentage of black babies that are uh, aborted as opposed to non-black babies. I think you said uh, three or four times more black babies than non-black babies are aborted. Um, you also talk about mind you one of the reasons for that is the founder of Planned Parenthood Margaret Sanger I believe her name was was a racist she was putting Planned Parenthoods in black neighborhoods to exterminate black people that's you could google that that's on record she was a racist who who founded Planned Parenthood but nobody talks about that because you know you don't want to say that because then we will get well abor then abortion might be a bad thing if we start talking about that but yes the the founder of Planned Parenthood I believe her name was Margaret Sanger was a racist that wanted to exterminate, in her own words, the black population. That's a reason why abortion clinics are in black neighborhoods. And then she's going to give her systemic racism. Do you see any? And then let me just give one more comment here. Abortion is not a race thing. It's a life thing. It's not a political issue or a race issue. People have told me you shouldn't speak out against abortion because you know it's a race thing. It's not a race thing. It's a life issue that we should be talking about and discussing. Systemic racism associated with the prevalence of abortion for black babies as opposed to non-black babies? Um, absolutely. Um, the higher rates of unintended pregnancy that lead to higher abortion rates among black people um, is a result of structural racism, systemic racism. Um, I understand systemic racism not to be boogeymen who are trying to uh, dupe black people into abortion care. I understand structural racism to be the systems that have made it so that black people disproportionately bear the burdens of poverty in this country, um, the systems that have denied them the basics that they need in order to, to live humane lives like food, clothing, shelter health care so you believe that, you be that responds you listen to the question you about to there ask ought her. to be more black babies aborted is that right i believe that, that we ought to create the conditions under which people such an easy question to answer should more black babies be aborted and this is our answer leave li lead lives that are filled with dignity and humanity and that means your, being able your way to of thinking that happens when more black babies are aborted i believe i trust i love black people with the capacity for pregnancy so she doesn't answer the question. If you ask the question, should more black babies be aborted? The answer should be no. No one needs to think about that. But she doesn't have an answer. None of them are going to have an answer, by the way. Spoiler alert. This is the madness here. And her answer to systemic racism is more abortions for black people. That's the answer to systemic racism. How does that make any sense? I think they have agency. They have intelligence. She's a they professor. know what is best for themselves. And I would love to create the conditions under oh. which they can live lives that are filled with dignity and humanity. And do you think a do you think a, a baby that is delivered alive has value? Yes. Why does it take five seconds? Do you think a baby that has is delivered has value? And it takes her ten seconds, five seconds to answer. Yes. She says yes. Do Look at. Watch what she's doing here. She's looking at her notes because she's so politically correct. She has to make sure that she didn't say anything that's not politically correct in her Think notes. They, uh, she's like, oh, did I mess up there? A baby that did I mess up by saying a baby has no value? Is not yet born has value? I believe that a person with a capacity for pregnancy has value. They have intelligence. Do you believe a baby that's not yet born has value? And her answer is no. That's her answer. Law professor UC Berkeley. This is who's teaching our kids. This is who's teaching our generation. These are the high ups in the education field. And she's before Congress, uh, before Senate, at a Judiciary Committee saying, no, no. I believe the person has value, but not the baby. They have agency. They no, have I'm dignity. talking about the baby. And I'm talking about the person with the capacity for And I'm, you're not answering the question. I'm asking. Of course she's not. I'm, Why I'm would answering, she answer? I'm answering she's a more interesting question to me. Do you think that the baby 
that is not yet born. How is this hard let's to say answer? the day before this mother delivers, do you think that baby has value? I think that the person with the capacity for pregnancy has value, and they have the they should have the ability to control what happens to what their lives. Well, and and I just note you refuse to answer the question, uh, Ms. Harrell. The Declaration of Independence okay, talks we're about move certain ahead here unalienable rights some more that you're pro -choice advocating answers. for abortion uh, at any time. Now, this is talking about should you be able to get an abortion at any time? One month, seven months, eight months, right about to give a bait, have give birth tomorrow. Should you be able to get an abortion? Is that, guys, is that a hard question to answer? The answer should be no. No, if a baby's a day, it, <sighs> for any reason, at any point during a woman's pregnancy, is that correct? What I'm advocating for is for everyone to have the right to determine what's best for their life, their at body, any, and their any future. Any time, at any point in the pregnancy, is that correct? I'm advocating for everyone to so have disgusting, the right guys. to make the personal decision disgusting. about what's best for their life, their body, and their future. I don't, everyone should have that right. Do you not understand my question? My question is, are you advocating that a right, there's a right to abortion at any time, for any reason, at any point during a pregnancy? I'm not sure if you understand my answer, but what I'm saying no, is I, that- I understand that you're her not answer answering is yes. the question. Then we're, I, and what, her answer what is I, yes. What's, what amazes me- Her answer is at any point in the pregnancy, for any reason, at any time. That's his question. Uh, you should be able to have an abortion. This is where the world's at. What a sick world we live in. Where now you should be able to kill your baby at any time because you feel like it. Because you don't want to take care of it. Is the advocacy for unlimited abortion rights Ugh. where there is zero value placed on an unborn child. I think Senator Cruz Makes pointed sick, out man. obviously abortion turns. is a very emotional and divisive issue in our society. One reason why we haven't had conversations like this is because the Supreme Court has said you can't talk about it because it's out of bounds. It's in the Constitution as opposed to it being decided in a forum, uh, a legislative forum like, like the states. Um, but what I don't understand is the argument that a unborn child has zero value the yeah, day exactly. before it's delivered, but then has value the day after it's born. Ms. Matsky, can you, uh, can you help uh, explain that? The question we're all asking. Thank you so much, Senator. Yes, I actually can. Um, as a matter of fact, here in California, there's a law that's about to be passed called AB 2223. And this law basically will allow, as a woman is in the midst of a chemical abortion and she delivers a baby alive on the floor at any stage of pregnancy or in a hospital, um, that baby, if this law is passed, has the ability to be born alive and left to die. Um, That's so sick. I can't watch anymore, guys. Oh, it makes me sick to my stomach. Makes me sick to my stomach. The world we live in, we got to keep praying. We got to keep fighting darkness, guys. Now, again, there's this law being passed California. I live in California. It makes me sick where if a baby's born during an abortion and is alive on the floor, as she said, then the baby gets left for dead. A, a live baby, a baby of all things, guys. We're arguing a baby. It's so sad to me that this is the time we're in. The Bible did speak of a time where evil would increase, where men would only love themselves, be lovers of pleasure. The abortion movement, the pro-choice movement is lovers of self. The baby imposes on what I want to do. I still want to travel. I still want to party. I still want to live my life as a teenager, whatever, teen, whether it's teenager, college age, I'm not ready. I don't want the baby. So I was a big, a big adult enough to have the baby but or get pregnant, but now I don't want the baby. So the, the answer to it is, let me just murder the baby. Instead of giving it up for an adoption, which by the way, thousands wait on a list every year to adopt a baby. Instead of doing that, let's just let's just kill the baby. And I know you might say, well, what about rape, Isaiah? That's less than 1%. It's not even an argument. Rape is not an argument. Oh, well, what about her health? That's not an abortion. If your health's at stake and the doctor says it's you or the baby, that's not an abortion. So all these dumb pro-choice arguments are irrelevant. It's not your body. So the my body, my choice doesn't even matter. It's not your body. It's not an appendage. It's a another body, another body in you. And this is the world we live in where now doesn't matter what part of your pregnancy these women are pushing. They're barbarians. That's what they are. They're, they're barbarians. 
that now, no matter what month it is, we should be able to murder the baby. And now if the baby's born in California, if something goes wrong and the baby's born, just let it die. Man, we need to pray for this country. We need revival so badly. I just want to bring some light to these areas that aren't talked about, aren't discussed. Let me know what you guys think about this. Is the world going mad? We need revival. As darkness covers the earth, I believe the glory of God will cover even greater. We'll see you guys in the next video.